it's Rochelle Painbaum, and you are tuned in to the Barriers and Breakthroughs show here on Facebook Live. I am called the Pain Whisperer because I'm a physical therapist, and I'd love to help you fix your pain. In fact, I've had three people call me this week because they've had pain problems. One friend of mine, he's like, I, I lifted something, and now my elbow hurts, and it's hurting. Anytime I shake somebody's hand, it hurts. It's just aching, and what do I do? So that's a great question. He probably has a little bit of tennis elbow. So I talked to him over the phone, told him how to do a special technique to help fix it and save him a trip from going to the doctor, going to get an injection. And uh, anyway, he'll keep in touch with me. Simple things like that. I love to help people fix their pain. So on the Barriers and Breakthroughs show as well, you will also hear some awesome guests and that hear their story. And so I'd like to welcome today Pamela Okafor, am I saying it correctly? Yeah, Okafor. Okafor. And we met uh, a few months ago at the Fine Ladies Luncheon, and she actually asked me a pain question. So that's how we kind of became friends, and um, I was able to help give her a little bit of guidance, and and anyway, it's, it's getting fixed now, but it wasn't because of me. But um, anyway, I love to help people as much as I can. So welcome, Pamela. Thank you. Yeah, great to have you on the show. And you're also an attorney, correct? Yes. Yes. A gorgeous, tall, beautiful <laughs> attorney. You're too kind. <laughs> and um, you also work out. So your question was, what you want to explain? Like, I'm curious why you wanted to ask me. I guess you knew I was a physical therapist. Is that why you approached me? Yes, yes. Um, I had a subtle meniscus tear on my left knee, and um, the doctor recommended surgery. And I've never had surgery my whole life, so that kind of scared me. And being Nigerian, um, everybody I knew kind of stared me against it. So, um, but it was ongoing, and I really like to run. So, I really was thinking that was my only option. So, I was hoping that somebody could kind of nudge me one way or the other. And so, when I met you, I, I was asked, you know, because I was told to go to physical therapy yeah. to try to strengthen the muscles around the knee, but it didn't seem like it would. It was working, I guess, as fast right. as I was like, or yeah. I didn't really have much hope. And also, I couldn't stop running, and I didn't know if I was making it worse while running. Yeah. Um, so a running fanatic can <laughs> stop running even though it's hurting, right? So <laughs> no, but that's that's you know that's what a therapist can see when you try that and see if it doesn't work. Then what you, you what you did was right. You moved on and had surgery, right? Yes. And so they did the meniscus repair, right? They did a debridement, which is debridement. where they trim yeah. and, um, just a tiny little bit. So I have ninety five percent of my meniscus. Good. They just kind of cleaned out what was rubbing, right, and catching in there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Very cool. Um, are you not, are you back to running? Or are you strengthening first, doing a little bit of therapy before you start? Um, I am back to running actually. Okay. I'm, I'm very very stubborn. Um, yesterday I like ran three miles at the Memorial Park, and it's the first time I was able to run without stopping. Um, three miles, so I was very very yeah. proud of myself. <laughs> Thanks. Any knee pain? Um. <gasps> It wasn't like painless, but okay. um So yeah, you're gonna start doing your strength training, right? And strengthen your muscles, right? Yes, yeah. yes, yes. Actually we'll I have keep, an appointment oh, tomorrow at seven AM. Oh, for therapy? Yeah. Oh good job. Okay. I was gonna say I'll just like hound you to make sure you're doing it right. To keep yeah, you, yeah. Keep you straight. So very good. So you're from the Houston area? Where are you from? I'm originally born in Nigeria. Oh wow. Um, I moved to Houston a little before I turned nine years old, and so, okay. yeah. Because your English is perfect, it's amazing. <laughs> and you speak what, Igbo? Or? Yeah, I'm Igbo, but mm -hmm. um, English is a national language of Nigeria, so everybody almost everybody speaks English. Yeah, I, I believe almost 100% would know English. Um, the Queen's English, though, because it's British English. British, but, yeah. Yeah, but I'm also Igbo, so I, can, I speak and understand that also. Very cool. Awesome. So, how did you decide? So, you're an attorney, right? And how did you decide to become an, an attorney? Um, I, I guess I have to attribute that to my mom. She 
She always told me that I would end up in law school and uh, be a lawyer. I, at first, I thought I was going to be an obstetrician. I was very specific. Oh, wow. <laughs> I wanted to awesome. be, you know, the first. I love babies, and so I always was like, I wanted to be the first person that they saw when they came out, and um, that's what I thought I was going to do. And then, I think when I was graduating college, my mom was like, "Well, you know, I think you would make a good lawyer." So. I kind of listened to her and I talked to some lawyers and took the LSAT and it was it was like a wrap. <laughs> wow, good job. So, uh, That's awesome. Yeah, I didn't know what I wanted to be and I asked my dad and he said, I think you'd be a good physical therapist, you know, and I was like, <laughs> what did they do? And he said, well, they work with handicapped people and I was like, mm, I don't want to work with handicapped people. <laughs> but little did I know, so I got a knee injury. You know, I didn't really understand what physical therapists did, and mm -hmm. so I went to physical therapy, and I realized it was really awesome. Mm -hmm. So I should have listened to my dad. <laughs> anyway, so I ended up, of course, becoming a physical therapist, but your mom was giving you good advice. That's awesome. Yeah, she's a very wise woman. So, very cool. And she is um, a, ph what, what? a pharmacist. Oh, she's a pharmacist. That's right. I knew she had a profession, so yeah, very yeah. cool. Awesome. So, so what? Where did you go to school, and what kind of law do you practice? Well, I went to Howard Law School in D.C., and I first started out doing insurance coverage work, and so I did that for a while. Then I moved back to Texas, um, took the Texas bar, and decided that I wanted to go out on my own and uh, open a general practice firm. Wow, you are really adventurous. That's amazing. So what was it like going to D.C. for school? Like you're away from your family. Was that pretty hard? Well, so I went to undergrad at Duke University in North Carolina, so I had already wow. left. This girl um, is smart, <laughs> yeah. Not that you, I mean, that's just amazing. Like just, you decide to do something and you just do it. And you do, you know, Duke is hard, going to D.C. That's really, that's pretty amazing. Being a woman especially. So. Exactly, exactly. So DC was different because I felt like you came into law school as an adult and it was like an adult mindset and it wasn't just like fun, like let's play in the dorms kind of mentality. So it was um, it was an adjustment. I mean, DC is a beautiful city. It's a fun city. It's a young city. It's a yeah. city that I would love to visit over and over again. Um, but it was definitely challenging. Yeah. Um, I always said I was married to law school in a sense. Like it was, it was my husband. I like treated like it as all such. Every day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I didn't do law school probably the way a lot of people did it. Um, but I was very driven. Um, I graduated fourth in my class and wow. um, woo. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. But that was that was just like my my, my whole mindset, just to do really really well. Um, I actually chose Howard because it gave me a scholarship, and my scholarship was contingent on how well I did. Yeah, of course. And we would always say that this is so like hard, so we don't want to have to add the added injury of having to pay. Having to pay at the same <laughs> to time. be tortured. I mean, I mean, it was fun too, and it was good to learn. But it's like it's intense. I yeah. mean, law school is it's no walk in the yeah. park. Yeah, you're, it's competitive, so especially where you're at. So. Yeah. Very cool. Okay, and so why why did you want to come back to Texas? Is your family here? Yeah, my family was here. I actually didn't plan on staying in D.C. after law school. It's just I got a job my second year of law school, and okay. so they, you know, paid me really well, and they paid for me to take the bar exam and wow. paid my rent while I was studying and stuff, so it's kind of like a you met transition. The right people. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, so I kind of just said yes to the best offer, and then I stayed there for three years after I graduated, and I was like, I think I'm going to have to actively do something, because I don't think I would live, there wasn't yeah. anything that was going to naturally bring me home, and I thought about, you know, if I started a family and got married, and I didn't want to have to have cousins to be separated, because it was already hard enough for me to be away from your family. Well, it was, it was already hard enough for me to come home oh. while in D.C. too because the job I had was very, very rigorous. I remember one year I booked a flight to come home for Christmas and I, I couldn't go because <laughs> we had to do like a filing like oh, right no. after Christmas. And oh, so wow. it was just... Yeah, that's dedication. I know we have a few pictures of uh, your... You sent me some pictures of your nieces. You have a close family. Yeah. Uh, we have a picture of that. Um, so you're a great aunt, obviously, to your 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 brothers and sisters' siblings. So 
Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We're very close. Like with me and my niece, the oldest one, I was there when she was born. We were all there when she was born. The hospital was really liberal. So wow. um, everybody come on, let's have a party. <laughs> yeah. So it's like, I mean, she's, she, she loves me and I love her too. So. Well, that's awesome. And then we have also a picture of your awesome, beautiful office. What did you do uh, here downtown at your practice? You said you did insurance, is that right? Yeah, well, insurance coverage. So it's okay. um, we represented insurance companies, but it's not like auto or like you know health insurance. Health insurance. It's more like general, comprehensive general liability coverage and professional liability. So for businesses. And yes. That? Yeah. Got it. Okay, that'd be interesting. You meet a lot of business owners, right? Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Okay, and so then you left that, and what do you do now? So I um, have my own practice and um, it's fledgling and so I do family law, immigration, personal injury, basically the whole gambit, um, but I also do some contract work too um, as I'm growing my practice, so okay. yeah. Hey, let's put up uh, a picture of her, her business card. Um, so this is how you can contact Pamela, right? Yes. So. Make sure and take a snapshot of that so you know how to uh, get a hold of Pamela. And so what what do you like to do now that you're kind of establishing your own practice? What's your favorite thing to do so far? Like immigration or you do divorces, I guess. Yes. Like my dad was an attorney and like Oh, okay. He did family he, he did family law, but he didn't like it really. Oh, okay. He worked corporate with the oil and gas industry and he really liked that. Mm -hmm. But, you know, he hated, like, divorces, and anyway, he just, <laughs> <laughs> I guess because he's a family man, he hates oh, yeah. people, like, breaking, you know. Yeah. Away. But, so what do you love doing? What, well, area law? Um, yeah. I have some breach of contract cases that are really interesting um, because it's all about interpretation of, like, the intent at the time the contract was entered into, oh, wow. which is... Um, it's really interesting to try to prove that, you know, somebody's intent versus what's actually written on paper. Wow, interesting. I have a patient who's an attorney, and so he always is telling me of cases he's keeping track of on TV, you know, and anything in the news that has to do with, you know, law or, you know, evidence and that kind of thing. He's always, like, telling these, you know, different sides of the stories and cases, and it's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Very good. So, who, do you work with anybody else as a, in your practice or like adding a partner or anything? Are you looking to add a partner at all? No, I mean, where, I, where my office is, there's another attorney there, um, but we kind of just have our own separate operation in the same building, so. Okay. okay. So, what kind of separates you from other attorneys? Like, why would you be better? <laughs> um... What separates me? I mean, I feel like I actually care. I'm personally invested um, in what I do. I believe I, I, I'm more interested in making you happy and making sure you get the right resolution versus anything else because I feel like my name and my reputation is all I have in this world. And so I would rather you ha be happy than um, it not to go in a way that would make you happy. Yeah, of course. Like, um, do you, and I'm sure you work extra hours, <laughs> if you, you have the flexibility, you know, like I'm a mom and so certain, that's why I chose what I do doing home health because I'm a little more flexible, you know, mm -hmm. but I guess you can burn the midnight oil no matter what. So um, if you're willing to do that, definitely you would you'd be able to do that. So. Yes, yes. Uh, this past week I worked every single day. Yeah. <laughs> this week, 55 hours, which is, oh, okay. which is a lot, yeah. <laughs> but, Good. you know. So one thing I think you enjoy is running, and so you've run some races. We had a picture of uh, a race that you won. Yes. Yeah? So yeah. Nice. Um, my sister and my brother-in-law, they're really, really into running. They're, they run marathons, like half marathons, and so I don't usually run distance at all, so I just kind of tagged along, and so I was really surprised that I did as well as I did. Um, I guess I'm just... <laughs> Let me just try this. Oh, I won, right? Yeah. Well, I, I believe I came in second place, but I was, I was really happy with myself because I couldn't even... 
I didn't even have the mental strength to continue, but then I saw people cheering, and I saw banners, and I was like, you know what? I can't let them down. <laughs> it's not for me, but it's like, I feel like they were cheering for me, so. Yeah, yeah. definitely when you're running, it's, it's kind of a breakthrough when people are cheering you on and, and encouraging you, and so it's good to share your goals mm -hmm. with people. Like, this is what I'm trying to do. Um, I have a girlfriend that I met at the gym, mm -hmm. and she is intense. Like, she runs five-minute miles. You know what I mean? For half marathons and that. And so, um, anyway, I'm going to go watch her race because I think it makes a difference with how she'll do if she knows people are supporting her, you know? Definitely, so. definitely. I, I really like running. It got me through law school. I, I ran the day I took the bar exam. I would run, like, every single day, so. Um, That's a yeah. good stress <laughs> relief. That's a breakthrough, obviously, for... Making it through difficult things. It Definitely. Like, yeah. it, it feels like flying to me. I know people, some people don't like running, but it's like it's the one time when you can basically escape everything. Yeah. And awesome. you don't need anything to do it. You just need your shoes and yourself You're and out. your mind. Yeah, so. that's great. Do you listen to music? Or do you listen to things that, like, train, like podcasts? Or what do you listen to? I like listening to music. Okay. You know, inspirational music, something upbeat. Yeah. Yeah. You want to share what your favorite playlist or, or <laughs> running music is? Like some of your favorite artists? I mean, I love Nigerian music. It's, oh. I think it's the sweetest music ever. So, <laughs> um, You'll have to share some with me. I'd like to... I haven't really listened to Nigerian music, so can you share some music with me? Oh, definitely. Um, like to listen. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Rap music, uh, R&B, hip-hop, rock. Like, what do you listen to? Um... um like that has a beat, you said. So, yeah, I mean, I, I like things that are melodic. I've been listening to like Sunny ninety nine point one, which is I guess like old school recently. Yeah. Um, because I like eighties, right? You like eighties, yeah. Right? The that classic. was my era. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. So we have a little picture of your surgery. So, how? So what was that like? Like you? Was it scary? Because you hadn't had surgery before. That yeah. was kind of a scary thing. It was a barrier for your running career. I mean, you're running anyway. So you went ahead and did it. Like, how did how was that experience? It was you were nervous. Yes, it was. It was really kind of just weird because afterwards, I thought I didn't know that they did it. So I was just like, okay, well, we're about to get started because you know they knocked me out, and so I was not aware of anything. And it's kind of weird to like be on crutches and having to climb stairs and feeling like feeling unable to do the normal everyday things that you normally were able to do so mm -hmm. um i was very very stubborn too i try to do as much as i could as fast as i could but um felt like it all worked out so yeah, yeah it did just pace yourself and <laughs> make sure and listen to your physical therapist yeah for strengthening so that you don't get an overuse injury or you know push it too far too fast Definitely. That's Definitely. Good. good. Yeah, surgery is sometimes, you know, you don't know if you really need it or not, but if it was something minor and they fixed it up, that's good. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, definitely. Great. So so what's in the what's the best way to get a hold of you? Is it you're on social media, is that right? Yes. Okay. Instagram, Facebook. Yes, and um, my phone number is 713-213-1745. That's the best way to reach me, actually, my phone. Yeah. Um, but my Instagram is at Pam Okafor Law, and um, yeah. What is it, Pam? At? At, at Pam Okafor Law. Ask Pam Okafor Law. Yes. Okay. Ask Pam Okafor Law. Yeah. Okay, very great. Um, so, yeah, what's next on the horizon? So, are you going to run a 10K? Are you going to run a half marathon? Yeah, I mean, um, I would love to be able to run like a half marathon or one of those, um, you know those obstacle courses where you oh, have to yeah. do a whole lot of stuff? Tough Mothers. Tough mother. That would be, you know, going. Mm -hmm. I've always, I always wanted to like compete, like do like a, like a lifting competition. Like one of those. That's okay. like on my bucket list. Okay. I'm doing powerlifting right now. I'm going to do a competition in December. Oh, really? Okay, I have to come watch. I have so, to come watch. Yeah, come watch me. I'll be more motivated if I know okay. who's going to come. Yeah, Definitely. I'll let you know. Okay. There it is. So, I have never done it before either. <laughs> so, yeah, I, I like trying things that I haven't done before. So, I'm going to try this and, um, yeah, see how I do. 
I'm sure you look great. I mean, you already have a weightlifting background, so. Yeah, yeah, I've, uh, it's really helped me with my pregnancies and everything, so. Now, you were a sprinter, is that right? Yeah, um, so you did. when I did track, I you was a track. sprinter. Did you do hurdles? You just, what was your, your best run, I mean, race? I did hurdles, relays, mm -hmm. the four by ones, the, yeah. yeah, the 100, 200. I bet because you're tall, you were really fast. Oh, I, I, I think. yeah, like, I mean, I was, I was, legs, you're just I was fast. I mean, a lot of people think that I should have played basketball and maybe when I, if I started when I was younger, but I actually am not that great at basketball. Like in middle school, when I played basketball, I sprained my ankle twice in like one season. And you're so, like, okay, I'm done. The, right. the doctor said I had weak ankles because, um, you know, when you jump and you land, I yeah. guess the ankles supposed to support you. So maybe if I started when I was a kid, because I think that that's probably when the, the skill set, when your bones are growing, is formed. Yeah. And by the time I was in middle school, I was already probably my height or close to it. So, yeah. but um, Well, running is super awesome. And um, just make sure you keep your legs, your muscles strong, because that will take all the, the stress forces away mm -hmm. from the tendons, which keep you from getting a tendonitis or overuse injury. Okay. And, and keep the stability good for your joints. Okay, I'll definitely keep that in mind. Yeah. I, I've been lifting weights too. I um, I lifted weights before, but I've been trying to do that more, trying yeah. to build up some Good. muscle strength. Yeah. I'd love to share with, you know, if you have any questions. Okay. And let me know when you're doing the next race, okay? So I can come watch you. Definitely, okay. definitely. Awesome. Well, thank you for being on our show. And Thanks for having me. Yeah, and I'm going to reach out to, to you for uh, attorney questions. And uh, any of y'all that have businesses that, you know, you know, questions come up all the time. And so I would like to recommend Pamela and see if you can have her help you out. Immigration, family, what else did you say? Contract. Contract, breach of contract, especially you business owners. If you have any questions, can they just call or, you know, how, do, how does that work? Do they ask you questions and you say well come meet with me and see or do you ever give kind of a guidance of what what's the best way to do it, if they really need your services or not you know do people ask you that um i mean usually when people decide to call or they need one <laughs> i mean i think people okay. are usually a good gauge of that and okay. so i usually set up appointments at the office for them to come in so okay. do a consult yeah okay so reach uh, pamela on instagram you have a facebook page um, yes. Um, more Instagram. It's more Instagram. More Instagram. Yeah. Okay. And then you also have her phone number, text. Great way to get. And she does respond to every text. <laughs> she always responds to me even later at night <laughs> after work. So I really, yeah, you can trust her to get back with you. So, okay. Well, thanks. Thanks so much. And thank you everybody for joining us on the Barriers and Breakthroughs show. We, we meet every Thursday at eight o'clock Facebook and Facebook Live. So if you know anybody that needs to be on the show, make sure and tune in with us. Next week we have uh, Erica Villalobos from New York City. She just graduated with her master's in nutrition. She works in a bariatric hospital with bariatric is obese patients. Mm -hmm. Very fascinating. So um, yeah, we'll be having Erica on next week from New York City. So make sure and tune in and join us and if you know anybody wants to be on the barriers and breakthroughs show let us know so we will be seeing you next thursday 8 p.m on the barriers and breakthroughs show i'm rochelle pain bomb the pain whisperer if you have any pain i'd love to help you fix your pain message me text me get a hold of me if you want i'd love to help you out so we'll be seeing you soon bye